Hey guys, Eric and Angie with Gateway to Air Guns. I have this Seneca Dragon Claw. This is a 50 caliber big bore PCP. This is my next grip review. Really quick, I want to say thank you to Gateway to Airguns for making this video possible. Go check them out, guys, www.gatewaytoairguns.org, www.gatewaytoairguns.org. Okay, the Seneca Dragon Claw. It's 50 caliber, guys, purposed for big game hunting. It's a big bore air rifle, a PCP. Let's get into it. Okay, so total length from butt to muzzle 42.1 inches and the weight is eight and a half pounds. Right, the rifled barrel length is 21.65 inches and the length of pull is 14 inches. So we have the rubber butt pad, which is kind of cool. Most of them are black. This one is um, a little kind of brown color, I guess, to match the rest of the gun. Then we have the hardwood Monte Carlo stock. It has checker, the checkering on the grip and the forearm, as well as a raised cheek piece. Now, it, it would seem that it would cater more to a right-handed shooter because the raised cheek piece is on the left side of the gun where a right-handed shooter would put their cheek but it is not impossible for a left-handed shooter to get absolutely comfortable shooting this one, I would think. Um, moving forward, we have the action, guys, and this is a bolt action. And the cool thing about the bolt action is it's got two power settings. Um, you can either pull it all the way back, fully cocked for high power, or half cock it for low power. Now below that, we have the trigger and the manual safety. And then there is the dovetail rail. This is 11 millimeter dovetail rail to mount your optics, but you don't have to mount an optic. We'll get that to that in just a minute. And the breech is right here in front of the um, optics rail where you would load your single shot. And then in front of that, we have the very awesome, very cool. It's nice to have this option on a big bore air rifle. I don't see it on many. We have open sights, guys. There, there is a rear adjustable and removable sight as well as a front blade sight. So if you wanna shoot open sights, there's the option. If not, just take this rear sight off and slap you on an optic. Then we have the dual tanks, they're 500 cc. Max fill is 200 bar or 3000 PSI, whichever language you like to use. In front of that, we have our fill port, which is a regular foster fitting, super sweet, no need for extra accessories to fill it. And the easily readable pressure gauge right there, which shows max fill 200 bar. All right, guys, so let's move on to operation. How do we operate it? Well, first off, guys, safety is always engaged. Um, the only time you take your safety off is when you're ready to pull that trigger. So make sure the safety is engaged. Now, starting off, I'm not going to mount an optic because I'm gonna check out the open sights with this one. So first off, I'm gonna to need to fill it. And all you need to do to do that is attach a female fitting, foster fitting to your male foster fitting and fill it to its max 200 bar, 3000 PSI, whichever you like to say. Okay, so after filling your gun, you're gonna point it in a safe direction. You're gonna cock it, and in order to cock this gun, you have to disengage the safety. You will not be able to cock it with the safety engaged. So disengage the safety, choose whether you wanna shoot it on high power or low power, cock it to that power, then pull the trigger. Performance. So let's see what kind of trigger we've got with this. And we're gonna check it on high power and on low power. Five pounds, four ounces. Okay. 
First, I'm going to shoot it open sighted at 25 yards just to check out the open sights to see how accurate it is. I think it's got to come up a good bit. Almost there. I'm gonna leave it right there and see how it groups. <laughs> Not bad at all. At 25 yards, guys, with the round balls, that was pretty sweet um, three shot group with open sights. Now let's slap a scope on it. So for this one, I slapped on the Hawk um, Vantage 30, which is my generally generally my go-to scope for my air guns. Took some shots at 25 yards just to get it sighted in with the round balls. These are 177 grain round balls. Now I'm shooting all this on high power. Glasses are fogging up. One thing to note, um, you cannot cock this gun while it's on safe, so you have to disengage the safety to cock it. I think that was, I'm going to bring it right a little, but I think that was pretty center. I should have. My bad, guys. You're supposed to load it before you cock it. You're getting there. You're getting there. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up for my 50-yard target and set my chronograph up, fill it back up all the way, and we're going to shoot full to empty on high power and full to empty on low power and see how many shots we get with each. So let me get set up. I'll be right back. Now the ammo I have is from Air Venturi. I have the 177 grain round ball. I have 185 grain hollow points as well as 336 flat point pellets. So those, that's the ammo that I'll be testing. I'm going to go ahead and load it. Now we're doing the round ball first. This is going to be an accuracy test as well as over the crony. Let me cock it. And this is high power. Okay. 661. 661. No, safety off to cock it, dork. There we go. Oh, that was odd. 644. These aren't doing well at all. 622. Let's see what our air is looking like. We are at 150 bar. 597. It's starting to drop. And we might could get one more shot. We're at about 1,200. Um, Still in the green, so let's go ahead and see what happens. Well, I'm not going to since it's already shooting low. It didn't really do well. I'm going to fill it back up. I'm going to go put some stickers over those shots, fill it back up, shoot it on low power, and see if it maybe shoots the round balls better on low power. All right, low power. See where, how it hit, where it hits and all that kind of good stuff. 623. Okay. 531. Oh, super low. 538. Yeah, they're not shooting well at all. 
Um, yeah, let me finish it out, see how many shots we get, it, get with it. Um, on low power. There we go. Six hundred twenty nine. Five hundred thirty four. Five hundred forty one. Six hundred sixteen. Six hundred nine. Six hundred. Yeah. Five hundred ninety-six. Okay, I'm gonna call it because it's um below the first shot's velocity, so that's where I stop. Let's see where we are with air. At about twelve hundred, so yeah, that's a good stopping point. That's ten shots on low power. So at fifty yards, the round ball really did terrible. Um, but I did continue my shooting because they are the lightest ammo that I have. I wanted to see how many shots I would get on high power and how many shots I would get on low power. And on high power, from 3,000 PSI down to 1,200 PSI, I got six shots. And then on low power from 3,000 PSI down to 1,200 PSI, I got 11 shots. You can drop it down lower than that, but I thought that was good enough for testing. See if they shoot well. Here we go. Ooh, to the left a little. Oh, I forgot to open up my app for my chronograph. Let me get that going. Six hundred sixty-one. Beautiful. Six hundred fifty-one. Six hundred thirty-five. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. These are shooting much better than the round balls. Oh, that was a little low. 623. About 150 bar right now. Five hundred eighty-eight. Well, that one dropped a little low, so it is starting to drop some. Um, no, that one flew way off to the right. That could be a pellet issue, I would think. That's way off. Um, I'm going to stop right there with these ones, fill it up, and test the heavier ones. Those ones so far are the best. The last two shots were a little off, but really big boar hunt guys, you're going to get the first two or three shots. That's what's important. Those first three shots were beautiful. The 185 grain pellets shot a heck of a lot better than the round ball. I actually thought they might have been the favorites until I shot the 336 grain pellets. Check it out. All right, these ones are the heavier pellets. They are the 336 grain. Pretty decent sized chunk of lead right there. Let's see how they shoot and what kind of power they put off on high power. All right, here we go. We're at 50 yards, if I hadn't said that already. I'm going to aim for the top orange dot because I think these will shoot a little low. They ought to anyways, they're heavier. Oh yeah. Those 539. Are definitely a little low. <laughs> 519. I was hoping they wouldn't hit right there in the group of other, the rest of my stickers, but that's exactly where they're hitting. 538. Hmm. Those are, let's see what the fourth shot does. The last three on the other ones were pretty good. Let's see if the fourth one does better than the fourth on the other. Let me check my air real quick. We are at about 150 bar. 502. Yeah, guys, th that was beautiful, beautiful. And I'm going to see, let me see what the air's at. We should get 
Yeah, we're gonna get one more shot out of this. <laughs> 684. Yeah, absolutely lovely. And uh, that's that's five shots. And the velocity, man, that it peaked right there at 684. That's the highest it's been. I'm going to leave it at, at um, five shots. You could probably get another one. What, what the heck? Let's just go ahead and take it, right? I don't want to mess up my group, though. That's beautiful. 501. Yeah, I think that one was a little low, which is understandable. The velocity dropped quite a bit, but those are the favorite. You can still see that that is an absolutely beautiful group, a definite kill zone for any big game. So for the Seneca Dragon Claws, favorite ammo is the 336 grain flat point pellets from Air Venturi. Okay guys, so velocity. Now Air Venturi got a max of 679. I got a max of 684, and that's with the 336 grain pellets. I'd have thought that the lighter pellets would have given me a higher velocity, but I actually got a higher velocity with the heavier pellets, which gave me over 300 foot-pounds of energy. Now that was only one shot. That was only one shot, so it could be that that one shot just got a big fat burst of air. I don't know, I'm not sure, but um, the rest of them were, um, the highest with the round balls was 661, and the highest with the 185s was 661. Okay, I have one more thing to do. Guys. Seneca Dragon Claw offhand, this is at, at 50, no, not at 50, at 25. Oh, safety has to be. Well, let me load it first. That would be the best thing to do. And I'm, I'm using the best pellets, the, the biggest ones, 336 grains. So I've topped it off. Ammo is in, cocked on high power. I'm going to try to hit that 6-inch plate. Oh, yeah. A little low left. Let's try that again. Guys, it is hot out here. Oh, complete miss. Complete miss. Another miss. Well, I definitely should not shoot any game with it offhand. Maybe one of y'all can do a heck of a lot better job than me, but... There we go. That was much better. Last one. Last, last one. Hope I hit it. Three out of five will be good. Oh yeah, sweet. Very nice, very, very nice. I'm definitely not gonna go taking any shots at any game offhand, guys. All right, let's move on to cons and pros. Okay, so are there any cons? Well, yes, there are. Okay, so I found that while I was out there at the range shooting, my hands were a little sweaty because it was quite warm out there. You can tell by my shirt is pretty wet. Um, this got really um, difficult to pull back and push forward with sweaty hands. The cocking handle at first, it's quite tough to pull back. I think it loosens up the more you use it, but at first it's a little rough. The triggers, it's the triggers a little hard. It's not as hard as um, Air Venturi claimed. They claimed seven pounds of trigger pull. I got five points, five pounds, I think four ounces on high power and three pounds, eight ounces on low power. So it's not quite as much as they had claimed, but it's still a little heavy. Um, 
Other than that, guys, that's pretty much all the cons. Okay, so pros. Um, it's definitely a sweet looking rifle. Um, it has that gorgeous classic kind of cowboy um, style look. It, I like the Monte Carlo hardwood stock um, with the checkered grip and forearm. Um, the action, it, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a nice little, some nice detail on it. Um, the fact that you can have low power and high power option just by pulling the bolt to that appointed place. Um, the manual safety, the option for open sights is super sweet to either keep them on or remove them is super sweet. Dual air tanks so that you have more, um, a higher shot count. And then the, the foster fitting, super cool. Accuracy is lovely and it puts out plenty of power. Another pro is that you don't have to only shoot lead projectiles with this, you can also shoot arrows. You can check those out at www.pyramidair.com. They have it all. I think that's pretty much it for all the cons and all the pros, guys. I would like to take a moment to say thank you to Gateway to Air Guns. Thank y'all so much for making these videos possible. If you guys have not checked them out, you really, really should. If you're an air gunner, you like air guns, you like shooting, go check out www.gatewaytoairguns.org. There is something for every air gunner alive. I promise. That's it for today, guys. I'm Airgun Angie with Gateway to Airguns. Thank you all so much for watching. Y'all don't just have a good day, have an awesome one. See ya. All right, let's see where it's hitting. Oh my God, are you kidding me? I put my scope on backwards. <laughs>